Hey folks, I'm Steve Butler. Do you or someone you know enjoy a good cup of tea? Well, you're going to love today's project. We're building this tea caddy. Come see how we do it here in the garage. All right, let's have a look at today's project. We essentially have a simple box, a four-sided box, but it's joined together by these hand-cut dovetails. We're using mahogany, and this is a great box for storing everything you need for an afternoon tea. We have a sliding top, which exposes a partition for tea storage. We have an area to store two teacups, and then a larger area to hold a teapot. And if that's not enough room, the partitions come out exposing a greater area. And then the whole thing sits on this presentation nest just to give it a nice little flare. All right, first thing we're gonna do is cut our parts to size on the table saw. Let's get started. Years ago, I was working at a craft center and a student in the ceramic department came to me. Um, they were about to have an exhibition of their work and they wanted a box made to showcase a teapot and then some cups they made, a tea set they made. So I did some sketches and that's how this idea was born. And so I thought it'd be a good project for the show. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is rip to width the pieces that make up our sides and the front and back of the box. Now, I went ahead and I milled up those pieces to 3 8 of an inch thick. And I set my fence at four inches wide. Now, the general rule of thumb about using a push stick is if the space between the fence and the blade is wider than your hand, then you're fine. You don't need to use a push stick, but do whatever's comfortable for you. Before we get started, make sure you have eye protection on, you're wearing some hearing protection, and I'm gonna put on the dust collector. I'm doing a lot of talking, so I'm not wearing a mask. You might wanna do that, though. All right, there we go, that looks great. Now that the sides and the front and back are done, I'm gonna set the fence to an inch and a half, and we're gonna cut the pieces that make up the nest. All right, there we go. We have our nest pieces ripped to width. I'm gonna go and take the side pieces, the front and back, and these nest pieces, and we're gonna cross cut them to length. Now, I'm not doing the partition pieces until the very end. I, once the box is together, I like to take a hard measurement right from there for accuracy. Yeah, I use mahogany because of the richness of the wood. I just thought it lent itself well to the, the tea set. It was very beautiful. Also, mahogany is just perfect wood for an oil and wax finish. It just, the oil really adds some depth to it and brings out the beauty of the wood. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is cross cut our side pieces to 14 inches long. Then we'll do our front and back pieces to nine inches. Thank you. 
All right, there we go. We have our sides cut. We have our front and back cut. Now we're just going to cut our nest pieces to length. All right, let me show you what I did. I measured out the length for our nest pieces. Now I'm only making a couple each, but I drew a line with a square at the dimension I wanted on my board, but I also made a line at that mark on my miter gauge fence, just to be accurate. All right, there we go. We have our nest pieces cut. We have our sides and our front and back pieces cut. Now I'm just going to put these aside for a while and we're going to go ahead and we're going to lay out our dovetails. All right, we're all set to cut our dovetails. The first thing we need to do is we need to score the wood and you use a marking gauge to do that and you set the marking gauge at the thickness of the wood you're using. In our case, it's 3 8 of an inch. And that tells us how far to draw or lay out our pins and our tills. You don't want to go beyond that mark. And you can see I did that. I scored right, a, right around our, the end of our board. I flipped it in and in and I did the same thing on all of our boards. Now I'm just going to put our front and back piece aside and we'll come to those later. Now I have my side pieces and you can choose to lay out your tails first or your pins. I like to do my pins first because once they're cut, I can use those as a template and trace out my tails right from there. So let's just put it in the vise. And we're going to saw these so you don't want this board up too high or it's going to bounce back and forth and your saw won't, won't be accurate. Now, the most common angles are one to six and one to eight. That's the pitch of the dovetail. You can use a bevel gauge. This one is set for that, which actually, this is set for one to six, which actually equals 10 degrees. You can buy dovetail jigs. And I just made this one out of some scrap plywood and a little piece to hold it onto the edge. And it's a one to six ratio. <clears throat> Excuse me. First thing you want to do is lay out a half pin on the ends. Now this is mahogany and sometimes the pencil line is a little difficult to see. So you could use a colored pencil, a white one if you like. But I'm just going to use this pencil and then I'm going to come back with a marking knife on those lines. And the spacing is entirely up to you. I'm putting, I'm going to have it so it accommodates three dovetails. We could make it two or even more, whatever you like. You don't want them too thin though, because then they could break easily. All right, now I just put a little X so I can remember that it's, that's the scrap side, the waste side. And then I take my square and I'm just going to bring these lines down just for a visual for myself. All right. Now I'm just going to score these with a knife and what that does is it allows the saw to kind of grab and get purchase right in there. I'm going to move this down in the clamp. Again, this way it doesn't flex or rattle back and forth. And you can use a dovetail saw. I like to use, like to use a fine tooth Japanese saw. And I'm just going to cut on that line at that angle. And I'm just going down as deep as that score line we did with the marking gauge. And what I do, you can see the saw on an angle. I just tilt it until one side is at that score line and now I can pull it straight and cut cut the rest down to it. And I'll just do that for all of them. All right, that looks great. You can see 
the pin starting to take shape. So the next thing we need to do is just to chisel out the waste. Now I went ahead and I clamped our other side to the bench. I used a piece of plywood underneath just to protect the bench so the chisel doesn't mar it. Now I screwed a secondary piece of plywood to the first one and I put it right along that score line where what we did with our marking gauge. And what that does is that it creates a shoulder so I can put the flat of the chisel up against it and get a nice accurate 90 degree cut. Now I'm using a socket chisel and it looks a little light. The, the common chisels are the tang chisel and the socket chisel and this is a tang chisel. And what's meant by that is the metal chisel itself is mortised into the handle, the wooden handle. Now even though this looks beefier, repeated blows with a mallet could end up splitting the handle. So we're using the socket chisel where the wooden handle is actually fits in the metal socket and that way you know you can use a, a, a mallet without any issues. Alright, let's get started. So I don't want to chisel all the way through just a couple of heavy wax. You want to take a light some light taps and then I just come back and I clean out that waste and just repeat that process until the socket or the pin is complete. The idea also, make sure you have a sharp chisel. If you don't, the end grain, what's left in the socket, will look like a piece of celery. There'll be all these holes and strands sticking out, and that tells you it's time to sharpen your chisel. All right, that looks great. I just have to do the other end, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right. These look great. There we go, we have all our pins cut. Now I'm just going to use this as a template to lay out our tails. All right, I finished tracing out all of our pins. Now let me show you what I did. I have my board, my front board, in the vise. <clears throat> and, you know, if you're not very accurate at sawing at an angle, it's a little tip. What I do is I use my square, I put the board in the vise on an angle, essentially at the 10 degrees of the dovetail, but now it's 90 degrees. And so all I have to do is make a straight cut, take it out, and I'll have my dovetail cut. There we go. Just go ahead, do the same thing for the other ones, tilt my board in the other direction, and cut those tails. All right, there we go. We have all our saw cuts for our tails. Now I'm just going to turn these boards over and just cut those shoulders off. There we go. I'll do the other one and then we'll go chisel out the waste. All right, there we go. We have all our tails and our pins cut. Okay, moment of truth. All right, there we go. Now that we have all our dovetails and our pins cut, we have to go and route out the groove for our bottom and then our dados for our partitions and our top. All right, let me show you what I did. I have my large router table set up and occupied with a large router. So I made this small bench top router table that we're using. I mounted it on my bench. We've got it clamped. And my router has a quarter inch straight bit in it. And we're using that to create the groove for the bottom, to hold the bottom in. Now our side pieces, we're gonna run a groove all the way through and it'll never be seen because it's coming out where the pins are. But on the tail pieces, if we did that, we would blow a hole right through the end of it and it'd be really visible. So we're doing a stop dado. I have a couple of lines. I have one where I wanna begin and I have one where I wanna end. And I'm simply gonna butt this up on the line and then drop it down slowly on my router bit move it along until I hit my other line. All right, I'm gonna put my shop back on and we'll get started. Yeah, we could have cut the grooves and the dados using the table saw, 
but it's a lot safer using a router and the router table. Plus, I was cutting stop dados, and the reason I had to do stop dados is because if I ran the piece of wood all the way through my router bit, it would have cut out at the end of a tail, and you would have seen that with the dovetails. You would have seen that quarter inch notch out of it. So this way I was able to do it safely. All right, I switched out our bit and I put in an eighth inch straight bit. And now we're gonna route a groove, but again, it's gonna be a stop dado, and this is to accommodate our sliding lid. All right, that looks great. Now I'm just gonna cut the lid with a little rabbit in it to fit in that groove, and then we'll go to the bench and we'll assemble the box. All right, let me show you what it did. I went ahead and I dry assembled all our parts. I cut the bottom to fit, and then I cut the lid, the sliding lid to fit. And it's just a simple saw kerf out of there, two passes on the saw, just to create the slight rabbit, and that slides in our lid groove. All right ready to glue this up. You just want to take your time, make sure you have everything. You have a rag to wipe up the excess, a mallet in case something goes wrong, you need to take it apart, plenty of clamps. There we go. All right, let's get started. Now I don't need to put glue on all the pieces. I'm just going to put glue on the inside shoulder of our pin socket. Now these dovetails fit really nicely. So I don't need a ton of glue because you don't want to split the wood. You don't want to have too much that it splits the wood. But you also don't want to starve the joint. So I'm putting a little bit on the end grain there and then just on the shoulder of the pins. And I'll come back once this is all dry assembled and tap this with a mallet. That looks good. Do the same thing for this end and just move around. You don't have to rush, but the glue sets up pretty quickly. Again, just be organized. Make sure you have everything you need. Now, before I put on our other back or side piece, I want to make sure I slide this bottom in and we have to put our sliding lid in. It's easy to 
get confused. Being careful not to split open those joints as I do this. We'll tap that in after. Put in our back. And before I drive this home, before I put a clamp on, I'm just going to open this up a bit from our joint, enough to put that in the rabbit joint. All right. Now you can make calls that are cut out the shape of the dovetails to help with the clamping pressure. I'm just slowly just going to put this on. I don't have it. In this case, it's not really necessary. because these closed up nicely. All right, let's do the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> All right, I just want to take a measure from corner to corner, and what that does, if they're equal, it tells me if the box is square. And I'm just slightly out, so I think I'm just gonna put a clamp on here, going across, just to ensure that looks good. Put another one in here. All right. That looks great. We'll just let that dry. Now we'll go cut the parts for our nest. All right, let me show you what I did. I took some eighth inch plywood I had, some scraps, and I made a template for our nest pieces. I have all the dimensions written down here, and then I spray lacquer them. I can put them aside and I can make this piece again. Now, I went ahead and I traced out the template on our workpiece. And I have a quarter of an inch blade in this small bandsaw. I have a larger bandsaw, but this one has the blade in it I needed. So what I had to do is trace it on both sides so I have the distance, the clearance distance here. All right, let's get started and cut these out. First thing I'm doing is I'm just cutting out the notches or the lap joints so that the pieces fit into each other. And then I'm going to make a series of relief cuts to cut out the waist for the length of our nest pieces. In this case, I used a yogurt container just to create a nice curve. You could use whatever you want, a circle, Jake. Just gonna do this first. You wanna go nice and easy, you don't have to go too quickly. Now I just wanna go on the diagonal, corner to corner, to cut out that notch. Now we can just nip away at that center piece until we have it done. There we go, starting to take shape. Now I'm just going to cut right along that line and we'll have this one done.
There we go, we have one of our smaller nest pieces. Just need to do the other one, and then we'll start the long ones. There we go. We have our nest pieces done. They came out really nice. Our box is finished. Just a little sanding, and I think I'll put a coat of oil on these and call it a day. All right, as usual, I had a great time building this project with you. I hope you come back. See us here again in the garage. I'm doing